which leads to oh mother talking talking with famous people never for a minute alec i never at any occasion for one minute thought i wonder if i'm a different type when i first encountered cognitive functions i wasn't well, cognitive functions it was just mbti it's the type descriptions I concluded as ENTP, I thought there was no different, no possible way of being anything else. When I took those initial MBTI tests, they all tested me ENTP. But I quickly sort of intuited the way they were testing, so determined they were more or less useless in testing me pretty quickly. And then I forgot all about MBTI until years later, except this time there was cognitive function information there. It wasn't just uh, letter dichotomies, you know? I still thought it's just another one of those kind of arbitrary bullshit metaphor stick on top of whatever and make it fit kind of things. Um, until I looked into it more and more and more and I realized, oh my God, this thing is apparently right. <laughs> you know, it's like, what? This thing? This thing turns out to be right? What the fuck? It's kind of like you discover one day that tic-tac-toe turns out to be the code to the universe or something. <sighs> tic-tac-toe? Really? That's the most genius game ever invented? <sighs> Who knew? Tic-tac-toe. I operate under the, old, the default NTP perspective, which is every frame's bullshit. There is no meta frame, right? That's the default NTP perspective on things. And the problem with every frame is that people under every frame are always claiming that their frame's the meta frame, but there is no meta frame. Who knew? There is a meta frame. It's cognitive functions. It actually explains everything. It's like God, but without the magical thinking. Because God also explains everything. If you're satisfied with God as an explanation, then it does explain everything. Mommy, why do people have war? God. Oh. Mommy, where do potatoes come from? God. Oh. Mommy, why am I asking these questions? God. Oh. Mommy, how can I distinguish between different causes of things if the answer is always God? God. What does frame exactly mean? Well, historically, psychology has approached the question of framing through which frame is the, the best frame. So you get Skinner who's saying, no, people were fundamentally behavioralist. You know, they are responsive to stimuli you can train them like you can animals and anyway people have been trying to approach everything through these various frames freud says you know it's all about your junk jung says it's all about archetypes cognitive functions provide the meta frame because they explain why each of those people is projecting that single frame without advocating any particular frame as preferable inherently yeah, you know, people have been dividing humanity into two categories for all of human history. The fundamental difference between people is some people get it and some don't. Or some people keep their shit in order and some people are a slopping mess. Some people use their thinking and some people use their feeling. And when they do that, they're basically saying there are two kind of people in the world. Those who adhere and uphold to my absolute values and my friend projection and those scoundrels who don't. One way in which you can evaluate the term frame is simply to think of it as a criterion. A criterion by which you're going to be satisfied. When Rachel went to the emergency room, she and the emergency room people have two different types of frames. Rachel's going in with a frame of reference that says, I know what I have, I don't know why the symptoms have suddenly worsened, and I think you should give me one of these two anti-serotonin drugs. 
But because the frame of reference of the doctor was, I'm going to diagnose this because it's not serotonin syndrome, because some of the symptoms aren't consistent with what I've seen with serotonin syndrome before. When she didn't get the diagnosis she expected of some kind of infection, she just sent Rachel home without doing anything. At no point was Rachel central to their equation there. I seriously doubt if anybody ever asked her, if this doctor's visit were to go smoothly and you were happy at the end of it, what would have happened? Did they ever ask you that of the doctor? No. That's a lack of framing, you know? Like when we talked to the RN and I said, okay, well, what exactly are you testing for? And what's the, what's the line of thinking here regarding these tests? Do the additional tests to eliminate other possible things simply for the purpose of strengthening the case that she has serotonin syndrome. And it's like when I pushed her to clarify all these points that I needed to know, it was as though for the first time in history, someone had opened her eyes to the possibility that maybe we could frame these questions. Why are you doing this testing? To get more information is indicative that you've done inadequate framing, right? Because you've not accounted for why are we there? And this is a, a problem, especially in healthcare, because by and large in healthcare, people are expected to strangely defer all concerns and matters of their own body over to this expert, who then is expected to treat the matter as though money were never at um, at issue. Talking, talking with famous people. Which leads to... Oh, mother.